Hello and welcome to this Acumetica video entitled Demo for Success. We have a familiar topic before us today, but one that is also critically important. In any case, I hope you will find the next 20 minutes or so both helpful and interesting. And with that said, let's get started. As you are quite aware, success in business is not necessarily easy in today's challenging environment. Across the economy, resources are strained and time has become an even more precious commodity. All the more reason why, when through our own persistence and hard work, we have won the chance to place ourselves and our solution in the form of a product demonstration in front of a viable prospect, we must take full advantage of the opportunity. We must know how to demo for success. Turning to our agenda, our objectives for this module are quite straightforward. We will begin by talking about why we do product demonstrations. That is, what is the purpose of the exercise? We will then have a discussion about what to demo, and logically enough, we will conclude the module with a dialogue about how to demo effectively. Simple enough? Yes? Good. Let's proceed. As I mentioned, our first agenda item today is why to demo. That is, what really is the purpose of a software demonstration? Tell you what, just to keep us all on our toes, let me take you back to your days at school. In fact, let's have a pop quiz. Okay, number two pencils in hand, eyes on your own paper, ready? Here we go. What is the main purpose of a software demonstration or demo? Is it A, to show a prospect how the software works, B, to demonstrate the abundance of features of the software, C, to give a prospect a feel for the user interface and the layout, D, all of the above, or E, none of the above? And the answer is actually E, none of the above. Yes, a product demonstration will do all of the above, but if you really think about it, the main purpose of a product demo is to reinforce the sales message that you have been asserting since you made first contact with the prospect. That is to say, the demo is the tangible or at least visual proof point of the Acumatica value proposition. Or perhaps to put the matter more graphically, consider this. It is one thing to tell someone how wonderful your product is. For example, a salesperson might tell a prospect that this Ferrari goes from 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. But it's quite another thing to put the prospect in the car, step on the gas, and pin them to the backs of their seats. As an Acumatica partner, you have gotten to this point with your prospect by helping them understand the vast benefits of the product. Now it is time for you to step on the gas and show them a demo that will make a similarly powerful impact. But if above all else, the purpose of a product demonstration is to reinforce the sales message and offer proof of the Acumatica value proposition, why do we still tend to approach our demos like this? So let's have a look at the software beginning with a detailed tour of the general ledger package, the accounts receivable module, and then the accounts payable module. We can then walk through how to make journal entries and we will conclude the demonstration by creating a detailed report using R. Yikes! Or perhaps you have seen a demo that more, looks more like this where the presentation is only eight minutes old, the presenter hasn't supported any aspect of the Acumatica value proposition and is now 15 layers deep into some esoteric layer of the inventory module, an unfortunate sequence of events that has resulted in converting a prospect that once looked like this into one that now looks like this. Okay, yes, I'm exaggerating a little, but it is because I'm trying to make a point. And that point is, when we forget the main purpose of the demonstration, we run the risk of under-optimizing a precious opportunity. And before you know it, we could end up giving a presentation which squanders valuable time by presenting the obvious, de-emphasizes rather than emphasizes the key benefits of the Acumatica solution by talking too much about minor features or conducting a training session instead of a presentation. 
something that newspaper types like to call burying the lead. Or worse yet, we inadvertently give a demonstration that either confuses our prospect or puts her to sleep altogether. The fact is that most product demonstrations that fail to hit the mark do so because they were overly featured focus, and yes, overly informative, which is not an unexpected outcome when this is the agenda. But as experience has shown time and again, it is not the feature-focused, overly informative presentation that gets results. Rather, the successful presentation is one that is benefit-focused and helpfully persuasive. But why is it that the persuasive, benefit-focused presentation is consistently more effective? Because these types of presentations also inherently embrace one very simple, yet long-enduring and irrefutable truth, which is that when a customer walks into a hardware store, it is not because he wants a drill, it is because he wants a hole. And what is the hole in our scenario? What does our prospect really want? Not a drill, not a GL package or a fixed asset module. In fact, she doesn't even want software at all. What our prospect wants, the hole she is looking for, is nothing less than a business solution. Our prospect wants the ability to work anywhere and to do so efficiently, to reduce competitive threats and feel that their data is secure. They want to leverage customization to simplify, not complicate, their jobs, to stop spending money on costly aftermarket supports and reports. They want to realize greater revenue as a result of being able to offer superior customer service, and they want to save money by reducing their spend on non-revenue revenue producing initiatives such as tax and financial audits. That is the whole. That is the solution. They want sales, not software. Financial success, not features, or software as a service. And so, as to the question of what to demo, our second agenda item, well, the answer has become rather obvious, has it not? What we want to demo is the whole. We want to demonstrate the meaningful benefits that the prospect will realize when they partner with Acumatica. We want to demonstrate those benefits intentionally as opposed to happening across them as we click our way in drill-like fashion through the various modules of our software package. I mean, after all, if you were a client, which demo would you want to listen to? The one that talks about an agenda regarding how you can save money or spend more time at home with your family, or the one that is going to introduce you to all of the various function and features of an AR module. Look, I'm not saying for one moment that the prospect does not want to get a feel for the way Acumatica handles accounts receivable or reports or journal entries. What I am saying is that rather than mentioning the various attributes of the Acumatica solution as we happen upon them while clicking through any one aspect of the software, turn your presentation upside down. Provide a demonstration of benefits and solutions by incorporating various aspects of the fields and features of the various modules. And as for those unique company-specific needs or requirements that every prospect is inevitably going to want to have addressed? Well, in most cases, your discovery diligence will have uncovered such requirements, and you can incorporate them into your presentation. By the way, there is a discovery diligence module on the partner portal. You are strongly encouraged to have a look. But in any case, of course you will walk prospects specifically through how Acumatica can accommodate their foreign currency issues, their multiple office accounting requirements, their disparate and highly detailed contracts, tax matters, or their document retention needs. In doing so, as you demonstrate these solutions, however, don't forget the so what. That is, always attempt to tie each feature you demonstrate to a quantifiable benefit. For example, 
Not only can Acumenica store these documents, but you can attach documents electronically to journal entries or sales orders, which, especially in conjunction with your audit, can save you time and money. Well, that was a bit of a journey, but hopefully you now have some new ideas when it comes to the matter of what to demo. And so let's proceed with our final agenda item, which is the matter of how to demo. Of course, every industry veteran will have their own formula for conducting a great product demonstration, and certainly the 10 suggestions I am about to offer hardly constitute an exhaustive list. But implementing these ideas, or in some cases remembering to implement these ideas, will most likely help you to make the very most of your demonstration opportunities. And so, off we go. Suggestion number one setting the agenda. Before clicking a mouse or even turning on a computer, many successful Acumatica partners make it a practice to come to agreement with the prospect about agendas for the demo day. This collaborative agenda is one that specifically articulates the purpose of the meeting, the intended outcome, the prospect's agenda, the partner's agenda, and sets a hard start and stop time for the gathering. As an Acumatica partner, this agenda format provides you the means to propose a clear and concise objective for the day. For example, you might suggest to your prospect that the purpose of the presentation will be to clearly demonstrate how the Acumatica solution can help them drive revenues, reduce expenses, and increase employee productivity so that a decision can be made quickly and discussions regarding contract terms and implementation schedules can commence. Try it. You might be surprised just how often your prospect will thank you for your clear and concise proposal and reciprocate by agreeing to your proposed purpose and agenda. Of course, you certainly want to solicit a similarly clear and concise agenda from your prospect. See if you can urge the prospect to be specific. In an ideal scenario, you may be able to guard your prospect to committing to an agenda like, in the event that along with what we have learned about the product so far, if this demonstration shows that Acumatica can offer the benefits you suggest and can meet our various company-specific requirements, we would be prepared to proceed with a negotiation of terms and begin setting a timeline for implementation. Well, I did say in a perfect world, but it is certainly something to shoot for. Finally, it is important to agree to a hard stop time. Doing so will keep both you and your prospect focused on the task at hand. Suggestion number two, less is more. While it may sound counterintuitive, when it comes to the demo, most successful Acumatica partners swear by the adage that less is more. That is, they are committed to the practice of showing less, clicking less, and having less on their screens. So, what do I mean when I suggest that in our demos we should attempt to show less? Less than what? Well, I guess I mean fewer screens, tools, features than otherwise our instincts would suggest. Remember, it is an absurd myth that prospects will think your product is wonderful simply because it has lots of features. Quite the contrary. Super feature-rich demos generally leave the impression that a product is overly complex and complicated. Therefore, using your discovery diligence and your expertise, prioritize what you are going to demo based on the strength and the relevance of the benefit to the prospect and having done so be confident in knowing that you have done both yourself and the prospect a great service after all no matter how great the product and how many benefits it might convey the mind can only absorb what the seat can endure Speaking of which, I sense some of you squirming in your chairs. I guess I better keep moving. Continuing on with the spirit of less is more, I'm sure most of us are familiar with this scenario. The customer asks, will your product do X? And as a knee-jerk response, we enthusiastically answer, you bet! 
Then we proceed to execute a mesmerizing symphony of clicks and mouse tracks, all to finally land four minutes later on some nondescript screen that the prospect cannot remotely comprehend. But upon seeing such, we click one last time and triumphantly declare, See? In the meantime, however, having watched this unintelligible series of activity, the customer is now feeling sick to their stomach, having developed a nasty case of software vertigo. The takeaway here is, of course, this. Click less. Many times it is far better to leave the mouse alone and offer a simple verbal response such as, Yes, we have a great template for that. In fact, it is one of our more popular reports. Lastly, as you do your demonstration, try to keep a clean screen. The Acumenica software is particularly good at allowing a user to unclutter their screen views so that only the most useful or relevant tabs and fields remain in the workspace. Use this feature to your advantage. Before you present your demonstration, set up the screen views that you will be using so that, at least to the extent possible, only the fields or features you plan to discuss are on your demo screens. This will provide less distraction to your prospect and help you to avoid the natural tendency we all have to explain everything on the screen, superfluous or otherwise. Suggestion number three, tell a story. What I am talking about here is nothing more than this. Rather than simply showing a prospect a feature or benefit, tell them a story about a business or a particular manager that realized great success as a result of that feature or benefit. Using this technique makes your presentation more interesting and brings points home with all the more impact. After all, we don't remember George Washington as having been honest because some historian alluded to it in a textbook. Remember his supposed honesty because of the story about the cherry tree. Incidentally, by all means, feel free to make up the story. The cherry tree story never happened either. And really, is anyone going to begrudge you exercising a little bit of poetic license? Suggestion number four. Try whenever possible to use pre-existing data. As you can see, it can be very annoying and unnerving to watch someone type, especially if they are slow or make a lot of typos. And certainly, internet latency can really kill the flow of your presentation. As such, whenever possible, the rule of thumb is to at least try to avoid entering data real time. For example, instead of typing a journal entry, see if you can simply pull one from the existing data and describe versus physically demonstrate how the data might be input. Remember, too, when inputting real-time data, for example, entering a journal entry from scratch, any bad day, typo, or misfield is likely to result in an error message, and an error message is the kiss of death, because when a prospect sees an error message during a demo, she is likely to immediately assume one of two things. Either the software doesn't work, or you don't know what you're doing. Neither of these prospect assumptions are conducive to your being able to send your kids to college. So like I say, in so far as you are able, best to have your demo data pre-entered. Suggestion five, be present. This seems obvious, but often while engrossed in doing a demonstration, we can forget that we are a presenter, not merely some sort of computer operator. Remember, when you are looking at the screen, you are not looking at your audience. Therefore, use a projector so you can look at the screen and your prospect from an advantageous vantage point. Click when you must, but then take your hand off the mouse and talk to your audience. Stand up if you can. It will remind you that you are not back at the office in front of your computer. You are in front of an audience presenting. Assert your presence. Make eye contact. This is especially true if you are doing a WebEx demo. Something, by the way, I believe should be avoided at all costs, but I do acknowledge that they are a fact of life. In any event, especially when you have no ability to make eye contact or read body language, check in. Ask your WebEx audience, are you with me? Are you there? Do you get it? Is everything clear? Check in. Check in early and check in often. Suggestion 6. And speaking of checking in with your audience, 
One great way to do so is by asking open-ended questions. This not only keeps your audience engaged, but it helps them start thinking of ways that are conducive to them making a favorable decision. Ask your prospect as you demonstrate, who in the organization is likely to benefit from iPad access? What other documents do you think you might attach to journal entries? How could you use the email feature to improve customer service? Which departments will benefit from roles and other data security functions? How might you use Acumatica's APIs to save you time? Which department would really benefit from customized report writing? Do this right and before you know it, your prospect will be selling themselves on the Acumatica solution. Suggestion 7 is about taking control. Okay. This topic could be somewhat controversial, so let me explain what I mean by taking control of a presentation. Actually, no, better yet, let me explain what I don't mean. I don't mean that when we are in front of a prospect, we are not listening intently to their questions or concerns, and I don't mean we should not be receptive to their requests. However, we must not relinquish control of the presentation to the prospect and let them dictate summarily what they want to see or hear. It is you that knows the solutions that you can provide, and as such, when we agilely but firmly maintain our control of the direction of the presentation, we are in fact doing our prospect a genuine service. Remember, you are the expert. They know their company and they may have an idea about their accounting needs, but you are the authority on Acumatica and on accounting systems. And the only way you can be certain that the prospect is given the critical data that your experience and your extensive discovery diligence suggests that they must have in order to make an informed decision is to keep your presentation on track. After all, is it really that off-putting to say to a prospect, yes, that's a great question, and I rather suspected you would ask that, as such as I have built the answer into this presentation and will be coming to it shortly. Number eight, prepare, prepare, prepare. Folks, there simply is no substitute, and we both know it. We began our presentation by discussing how challenging it is to do business these days. After all it took for you to get the product in front of the prospect, are you really going to try to wing it? Even if you have done a thousand presentations in your career, this is the first time you have presented to this prospect, and each prospect presents a unique set of challenges. Each prospect will be moved by something different. In this competitive market, we have to play every game as if it were the Super Bowl, and therefore winging it is simply not an option. I can remember in graduate school, they used to say that you should prepare three hours for every one hour of class time. A similar format is probably appropriate in this context. And so, take the time to outline or even write out what it is you will say and show. Know every click, screen, comment, and story you intend to execute by rote. Inevitably, your preparation will instill in you self-confidence, which will result in your doing a superior presentation, which will in turn compel the prospect to put their confidence in you. Suggestion 9. Have a backup plan. Look, folks, they didn't give Murphy a law because everything always goes our way. The fact is that over the course of a career and sometimes over the course of a single afternoon, if anything could go wrong, indeed it will. And so, we have to anticipate our laptop crashing, the internet seizing, and the in-focus machine doing, well, whatever it is that in-focus machines do when they don't seem to work. What was that key again? F5, F8? F8? Well, anyway, the fact is that although stuff happens, we can take precautions. We can have spares and backups. We could also, in a pinch, ratchet down the technology and work from a PowerPoint or even the Acumatica website, which has tons of great videos and other information. Explore these contingencies before you get in front of your next prospect and know what you will do when the one thing that can't possibly go wrong goes wrong. Suggestion 10. No demos. Nope. 
that's not a typo. The last suggestion I have for today is no demos. And what I mean is this. In your own mind and when you are speaking with your prospect, consider avoiding or at least downplaying the term and the concept of a demo altogether. Why? Because what we have really been talking about for the last 20 minutes is not how to do a demo. It is really how to execute an effective and winning presentation on the benefits and solutions that the Acumatica product can offer. To my mind, a demo is about teaching someone how to do something or how to work something, such as when the flight attendant demonstrates how to latch and unlatch a seatbelt in an airplane. By the way, can you believe they're still doing that? But as you are quite aware, we are not going to teach anyone how to use the software during our visit, so why use a term that would suggest as much? I guess what I'm trying to say is this. The more we remind ourselves that we are presenting and persuading and not demoing and instructing, the more successful we as Acumatica partners are likely to be. Well, that concludes this module on demoing, excuse me, presenting, for success. In this video, we've talked about why we present, that is, what the purpose of our presentations are, what we should present, benefits and solutions, not features and software, holes, not drills. And finally, we talked about how to present, walking through 10 suggestions that will hopefully assist you in stepping on the gas and doing highly impactful and highly successful presentations. It's been my great pleasure to be with you. Thank you for watching and thank you for being an Acumatica partner.